Hello, and welcome back to Factorio. I am Dorthek, and this is episode 12 of our Factorio 0.17 tutorial walkthrough Let's Play series. In the last episode, we cleared out some biter nests to allow us to defend this uh, choke point right here, as well as finishing up the steel array that gave us our first steel on the main bus. Today, we're going to continue with defenses, and we're going to build a wall across this choke point. We're going to build the wall just past this copper ore patch so that we can uh, use it in the future. It's a nice big patch, 24 million ore, compared to what we have left back here, which is only about half a million. So, I have picked up a whole lot of wall sections. We're going to put them on our hotbar. I'm not sure if that'll be enough, but it'll do. So we're going to go a little bit past a little bit past the copper patch and we're going to start drawing a wall. Uh, this should work. Not the most exciting activity. And in the future I may do parts of this off camera, but it does need to be done. Oh. And we've got some fighter activity over here. Oh, we've run out of ammo. That's really bad. We need to get over there quickly. Put some bullets in our car and speed our way over there. Okay. Biters are dead, but we do need to refuel and repair this. Okay, and these are also empty. The rest look okay. Well, that wasn't great, but it is what it is. Uh, while we're back here, let's go pick up some... Let's go pick up some more gun turrets at the jump-off base. And some more ammo, both the good stuff and the not-so-great stuff. All right, and back to our wall. All right, here's back to our wall. Let's pick up the car. And keep building it. Now, we could turn the corner and bring it in closer to the water, but corners tend to be weak spots to attack, so I'm going to just extend this all the way down, like so. Yeah, not like so. Like so. Uh, one thing we can do if we had any... Alright. So this is going to be the structure of our wall. Is We have the wall itself. We're going to put gun turrets one space back. And the one space back is important because the biters can reach over the wall into the first space. The spitters can always reach us, we don't have a choice there, but we can at least protect them from the melee biters. Uh, this one's gonna be a little bit of a challenge to feed, but that's okay, we'll make it. And we will have a belt with ammo that will feed in, and of course we're gonna need to provide power. So in the meanwhile, we're just gonna run this belt. This takes multiple passes to make work. And we can also look and see where do we want to bring our ammunition out. I think we want to bring it out about on this line here. We'll kind of jump over this area a little bit. So, uh, north of us. Okay. All right. Let's go back to the wall. Trees just on the other side are great because they will protect us from... They'll make the biters move slower, 
as they approach, but we do need to clear some to be able to run our wall in the first place. And trees behind the wall we definitely have no use for. Oh, a little too close. When there's trees on the enemy side of the wall, they're going to have to maneuver through those trees to get at us. And that's uh, that slows them down and gives the guns more of an opportunity to kill them. Can also shoot the trees. I tend to find that to be a waste of ammo. I'd rather waste grenades, but if it's just one or two trees, it's not a big deal. This is a long wall. That's for sure. Nope. Here I don't want to use grenades because I don't want to damage our own uh, wall, which of course I then immediately did. some biters up there but pollution probably hasn't reached them yet so we may be okay this might be a good place to turn that corner like I said but we will just go all the way to the water and uh, and we of course ran out of walls oh well we do need to run the other things back, and the good news is, if we look at our pollution, our pollution isn't really reaching past here much, so the biters are not likely to attack this wall. All of the attacks are coming from over here, where the biters are very much in our pollution range. So, we need to, once again, this is just for spacing, we're going to place a turret one away, and let's give it some ammo just for the moment to be safe. Then we need a inserter. And then we need a belt. Oops. And we probably don't have enough belts to make all this work, but that's okay. As I said, this will take several trips. And we have some turrets engaging somewhere, and something getting damaged. Uh, over here again. Ooh. That's a lot of biters, but the guns are just barely able to deal with them. Those guns didn't have the good ammo either. Which means it's gonna take them longer to kill the biters. Let's see where we are in terms of lining up. Aha. I think we can... Uh, uh, we need to be a little bit further south before we can do that. Okay, so we wanted the ammo to come in right here. So if we come across, we'll... Okay, perfect. So that's going to be our ammo feed point. So we're going to place a splitter right here. And feed our belts like so. Next thing we want to do is get some power in here. Actually, power and belts, really both, but uh, so uh, we might as well run this belt right now. Jump over this cliff.
Oh, and we're out of bats. Um, let's, uh, we don't have much in the way of purples, but we could at least start on this. Now it is possible to do this, the belt running, the wall running this from the car. The problem is you have to make sure the car is driving exactly the right angle. So let me show you that because that's, I don't usually do it in without mods because it can be tricky. So right now I'm placing it and it's exactly horizontal and everything is good. So if I pick up this, hold the button and drive forward, that'll work and it'll work at a nice fast speed. Oh. The problem is if I start maneuvering, if I get in the car and say, oh, I wanna go back the other way. It is really hard. Am I lined up exactly right? No, I'm going up slightly. All right, let me try to make... It's almost impossible to get exactly on the cardinal direction. I think I just did. But, it, you know, I don't rely on that. So... I prefer to do this sort of thing on foot. There is a very nice mod that um, locks your vehicle to, the, to kind of certain angles. And that changes the calculation... Um, drastically. But we're playing without mods. So. Alright, uh, while we're here, uh, let's uh, run this up here because we're currently relying on, on uh, some small power poles for our... Uh, a rock. For our power feed and I'd rather not. I'd rather have a more robust power feed here and we can do we can place one there and tie that into a oh, that didn't quite there. And we're out. Okay. Alright, let's go get more stuff. So what we need is and we're going to keep grabbing from the old base because we kind of want to use some of it up and some of the stuff that we're making up here we're not really making in our main base yet, like gun turrets. So we're going to take more gun turrets. In fact, let's open this so that we're making a little bit more. Uh, ammo. And we have walls being made over here. We are making walls in our main base, so that's okay. Okay, a thousand more walls, that'll do it. Uh, belts, we also need yellow belts. And we're out of space. Uh, let's, let's see, can we get rid of some of this stuff? Okay. Oh, we still have, we have lots of stuff. And power poles, we definitely need uh, more power poles, for which we will go to our main base. So we want these, and we want these. Just clearing out our inventory a little bit. Okay. This is the fragile link that I don't want to rely on. We will eliminate it very soon. In fact, I think we already can get rid of it. Uh, if we go turn on this button here, we can see whether our electric network is connected. And as you can see, it is, because we have this row of power lines. We can also zoom in. Oh, and I'm wrong. It's not connected, because we never completed this link. All right. Well, let's uh, re-establish this and let's make that link because all of these little strings of tiny power poles are just not very robust. Especially with my driving.
Okay, that's now tied in. Uh, I would like to run another one, big power pole lines up to our power plant, but we don't have to do that yet. We're just no longer relying on only this. Redundant power links are frequently a good idea, especially when you're dealing with biters, because the biters might take out a power pole. And these are a lot easier to drive between. Oh, <laughs> I don't have enough space to put all the coal in. All right, we will uh, come back for the car. Because I really want to get this belt in. And then we can run back on the belt to... In order to be able to get to the car faster. We don't actually need that guy. All right. Okay. So, um, I want to be past the green maker. Ooh. That's a little challenging there. Mm. We're going to take these out because we can use our medium or really even our large power poles for connecting. Not gonna let us, yeah, that'll work. Um, now we have a problem because so this is again temporary. Once we get rid of the wall, we'll be able to move that so we can feed this in. And this will let us bring us bring it here. So, why are we bringing it here? Because we want to build a small factory to produce ammo. And it'll have other uses as well, but uh, those will be seen later. Let's just run back and get our car before we forget all about it. And by running on the belt, that speeds the process up just a bit. And we can also extend this line of uh, large poles. I like using, lining them up with, the, with this sort of thing. And that will provide our link to... to the factory here. Okay, so what we want to do is make some piercing ammunition. Now, if we look at this and set it to making our good ammo, we can see that it takes three seconds to make one magazine, and it requires one firearm magazine to make it. One regular yellow one. If we set this one up, we can see that this takes one second to make. So one of these can support three of those. Well, I'd like m a little bit more than three of those. I would like six. We'll make the fractions easier too, which means we need two of these. All right, so this needs copper and steel plus our magazines, and this needs just iron. Good enough. How do we want to build this? So this will be... Hmm. Ah, 
We're going to move this over one. And then red inserters. Over here. Now we still need copper and steel, and we need iron over here. We need a lot of iron. We need four in a second. So that's uh, that's going to be more than one best inserter can do. So what we're going to do is this. Okay, and this will be our iron input. And then over here, we're going to have copper and steel. And copper and steel. And the reason we're going to put copper on the inside is that we need five per three seconds, which means we need a faster inserter, where steel will be fine with the slower inserter. Okay, that'll work. Now, because of these uh, cliffs, it's going to be a little bit of a mess to get this stuff in, but that's all right. We will survive. And of course, this will be our iron. Okay. We need power. And we need to bring in our materials. So let's, um, let's go get some. So we want iron to come in on this line right here. There. Mm, it's a little bit tricky because of these beads here, but that's okay. We can get it to, we can do this. And we've got, oh, got biters attacking us. Apparently they got around all our defenses up there. All right, they've taken that out. We need, they've taken out the power pole here and they've damaged some stuff. Okay. We should drop some turrets. We have some turrets here. Let's extend this line. And you can see why defense has become important because we do not want to be constantly interrupted by these um, to fight the biters. Alright, and having dealt with the biters, let's take out this 
row of wooden of the old power poles because they're just in the way as we drive. We discontinued and disconnected it anyway, so there's really no reason to have it sitting there in the way, in our way. No, nope, it's not. So we were working on the iron feed. Now we just do our regular jump, 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 except we've got this thing here. Cliff explosives will be really nice to fix this snarl here. Let's see, this should be on this line right here. That's iron. Now we're going to bring in steel. And steel needs to be split. Can't do that. Alright, get around this slightly higher. annoying that's our steel that can come in here and we can bring in our copper right here that'll go there that'll go there This joint is really ugly because of the of the cliffs, but what can you do? All right, so oh, this can't reach. That's a problem. We have a way to deal with it. Let's go back up here. Fortunately, since the last time we dealt with those clips, we've built our red production. And while we're not going to use reds yet because they are much more expensive, we are going to grab some red undergrounds. They are expensive, so we will only use them when we must. But here's why they're nice. Unlike yellow undergrounds, they don't jump four spaces. They jump six, I believe. So we will be able to comp to jump over those cliffs. So we are bringing copper in on this line right here. So, what we can do is use our red undergrounds, and they will be able to jump. They're also faster, but we're not after the speed, we're after the distance. Ditto here, we will use... that one. Let's go find steel. Steel is right here, in a place where it's inconvenient to get, of course. Mm, really? This is one of the problems with building on both sides of the bus, is you get... Um, nope, we don't have enough space. Uh, we need to dump some stuff. Uh, let's drop a box, and we will just stick half the coal in. And the stuff. We don't, we don't want to leave those gears on the ground, because if we run a belt over that spot, it'll pick up on the belt. Eh, 
And this is a little spaghettish, but they love you. We're getting still. That one's reversed. Hello? Still? Yep. Coming. So this is putting our... This is producing our regular magazines. And as soon as the steel comes out, we're going to start producing... Oh, except we didn't make out, but... Theaters. Oh, 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 I made a big mistake. I forgot about multiple belts. This is not the output belt. This is the input belt. We need an output belt. Uh, and the output belt will look like this. There we go. Red magazines. Um, let's go catch the yellow magazines that we put on the belt and see if we can uh, get them off it. It shouldn't be so many. Well, it's more than I expected, but that's okay. Yeah, they're all over the place. That's okay. You know what? We're just going to let them be. Okay, well, we've allowed the yellow magazines to get onto our belt, but that's okay. So the first uh, loads of our guns will be with yellow magazines, and then as those get used up, they will be with the red magazines. Good enough. Important thing is, we now have the red magazines on the belt. So let's go uh, complete... Uh, Work on completing our defense wall. Okay, we are going to start by running power out there. Okay, this gets us power here, and that also means we can put a radar in. We're going to need more than the radars than this. I only have one. So let's see, where do we want to put it? I'd like to put it so that it's in contact with what's already covered, which means right here. We're going to need more radars. So this one, just barely, uh, let's go back a little bit more and get it to overlap with the ne to the next uh, section. There. Uh, right here. That'll get us some coverage. Not enough, but uh, we'll put up radars later. I may do that during the... between episodes. Okay. Now, we use the big power poles to run our power out to here. But we're actually going to use the medium power poles along the wall. So we're going to run this all the way down. So let's put one right here. Right here. And then we'll place more as we need them. We're going to continue running this line of power poles. Like I said, building these defense walls can be a bit tedious. I prefer to do it this way. Some people like to actively go out and hunt the, um, the biter bases. That's fine. No wrong way to do it. Um, you know what? We can pick up all of the yellow bullets like this. Let's all right, now we want to load our turret, and we want this turret loaded too, but there's no good way to run the belt here without landfill, but we can load from one turret to another, and that's fine. Now, we want to 
place a lot of these guns in place, but we don't want to make a solid wall yet because that's just too expensive on ammo. So we're going to start by lining one up on each power pole. That's not a very dense wall, but it'll do. Unfortunately, they're dropping the power, the magazines on the ground, but there's that's okay. We'll pick them back up when we place the turrets. And now we're going to take our turrets and put them right where they can be filled from the... by the inserters. And now we have self-feeding turrets, which means we don't have to worry about refilling them. Now, right now, while the biters are still relatively weak, this will work. As the biters get more powerful, we're going to have to make more and more elaborate defenses. Other kinds of turrets, and denser turrets for sure. This is a very uh, low density wall. In fact, where we expect a lot of attacks, we can put more turrets. So I tend to like armoring my corners because a lot of attacks tend to happen in the corners. So I'm going to place several more here and make sure they get fed. Also where I expect a lot of attacks, I like to double up the wall just to make it a little bit harder for the biters to dig through it. I don't know if this is a place that'll be attacked. Once we get attacks, we'll see where they tend to happen. The other thing, of course, I want to do is place some more radars. And another good thing to reinforce is where we place radars, because biters like radars. So we're going to put this radar here, which means I will put a few more turrets by the radars. Oh, this turret is no good because we cannot possibly feed it, but we can take this one and put it there. That's two for one. We don't need that. There we go. And again, we can reinforce the wall a little bit. Um, are we getting more ammo coming in? Where is our ammo? There it is. Okay, it's just as the turrets were placed, they started picking them up. So it will fill. So, we've accomplished a fair bit in this episode. In addition to fighting off a whole bunch of annoying attacks, we've built about not quite half the wall, maybe a third, 40% of this wall. Most importantly, we've built a solid production for the good ammunition. And that'll uh, feed, a, feed, feed that wall and uh, other walls for quite a while. We still need to do something about the right and the top, and we will work on that in the next episode. I'd like to find out if there's a... Oh, there's a nice coal patch there. I want to find out what's going on up here, what the shape of that land is, and what the shape of the land down here is, because maybe we can do another wall here, or even an angled one like that. Because we will need space and we will need resources. We have copper there, we have coal there, we have oil there. That's very, very important. Oh, we have a big biter attack coming in. Let's watch it and see what happens. And they died. Excellent. That's what I was hoping would happen. Um, we also have some uranium right here and right here, which we will need significantly later on. What I'm not seeing is iron, and that's a big deal, because our iron patch is only has 300,000 
left and we're using iron quick. That's going to be a high priority is to find some iron, find a source of iron. All right. So if you've enjoyed this and you'd like to be notified of future episodes, please hit subscribe. I would also appreciate it if you could like this video so that it's more visible and more people can see this and learn from it. And in the meanwhile, why don't you try one of these yourselves? And as always, don't forget to save.